of tonight we usually talk about leadership so tonight we talk about we're going to talk about leadership in respect to us as christians i always give this backstories this backstory backstory and the people who have been here for a while can probably say this word for word already but um for us as christians um for us as christians it is important that we live a life that we can hear a job well done like as you are a christian you're responsible for your life you can spend all your money you can eat all the food in the world you can do junk eat junk food play video games spend all your money be responsible with relationships and all of that and in the day it's you it's your life god gave us the gift of life so we can do the right thing so you lead yourself we lead you know we are responsible for our lives we lead our life the way we, whatever we want to do so that's why we talk about leadership you're responsible for yourself but at the same time too some of us are you know we have kids some of us we leaders at our job whatever we do we are leaders automatically once you are human once you're a christian you're automatically a leader you're leading in one shape form or the other so according to matthew chapter 5 i think it's verse 4 verse 14 it says ye are the light of the world a city set on a hill that cannot be hid but matthew 5 16 says let your light shine before men that they may glorify your father who is in heaven you know like when they see your works let your light shine before men that they'll see your good works and glorify god you know and say man i like this christian like he, i've known him for five months i remember he was sick or depressed sad he's improving like he was not where he used to be um I like this person, you know, he used to be angry, he used to be confused and all of that. But as he walked with Jesus, as she walked with Jesus, they see deliverance, they see healing, they see breakthrough. So I want to encourage you as a Christian, like, it gets better with God. So as we are called to leadership, so that's what we talk about at the second half of every night is we talk about leadership so I, my encouragement to us today is there is a plan we have a couple verses to go under the fact that there is a plan for your life you're not a st statistic you're not just a, another person in this world you know you're important to god you are important to god so there is a plan so god has a plan according to jeremiah 29 verse 11 for the, i know the thoughts that I think towards you, see at the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That God has a plan for your life. He, just, he looks you in the eye and says, I have a plan for your life. There's a reason you're short, you're tall, you're black, you're white, you're a woman, you're a man. God has a plan for you. Like he has a standard for you. He has something for you. And according to Revelation 3 verse 22, says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. God is speaking. God is speaking. He's saying something to you and me. He's telling us, hey, this is how I want you to exist. This is how I want you to live your life. Um, this is how I want you to live your life. Like he is saying something. I'm sorry. I'm trying to look up this prophet again. I tried to. Is Elijah, Elijah, Elijah the prophet. So Elijah, a prophet in the Bible, was um, suicidal because at a point, because he felt he was the only one following God in a time when the culture is horrible and is messed up and everything was bad. He was suicidal and he thought, I'm the only one serving God. But God says, no, you're not the only one serving God. There are other prophets, there are other people who have not bowed your knee to bow. So what am I saying here? Like when you feel clueless, when you feel like everything's messed up, go back to God. You know, Elijah shared his heart, his pain, his hurt with God. And God said, no, 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 no. You're not the only one going through this. There are other people who are choosing me in the midst of all the chaos, in the midst of all the problems, the other people. So my, my here's my thing for us as Christians. In the midst of our culture being messed up, like if we sit down today and turn on the news and listen to all the horrible things happening, we can just decide this is horrible. You know, God is not here. But no, why don't you just listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying? Turn off the news. I prefer to read the news. Like, I am tired of listening to the news when they just say something's going on and they overemphasize and they go over it. I just said, you know what? Let me just read it. I read it. I'm done, you know. And that's it. So 
what am I saying here? It's like the, there's a way. The, the Holy Spirit in Revelation 3 verse 22 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit's saying unto the churches. Like if you have an ear, listen. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Just be calm. Hold your ground. Hold your peace. Scripture says, I love the scripture. It says, um, what does it say? Be still and know. So he says, be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the hidden. I'll be exalted in the earth. God will prove himself at the end of the day. You know, he will always prove himself. Be still. So like, I don't know what part of the aisle you're in. You might be Republican. You might be Democrat. Or you might be, you might be just going with the wind. Whatever you are, whoever gets elected, it is okay. It is totally fine. Don't lose your mind. You know, you might have a lot of money. You might not. You might be, um, you might celebrate. Like, for instance, I don't celebrate Halloween. My dad, so here, let me tell you the backstory of why people like me who are Africans who come from Africa, especially from Nigeria, are very skeptical about Halloween. We come from a place where we are just like, I'm like a third generation now, whereby we are doing away with witchcraft, you know three to four generations ago back from where i came from especially west africa deep in witchcraft deep in darkness deep in worshiping all this evil and the way it looks like in halloween where you see people with skulls and bones literally their homes houses there are places you can go to that put those things up and they celebrate darkness they can call up evil powers that can do stuff and when people play with the devil they have curses so those curses are like people don't live up to the age of 50 somebody always have arthritis somebody always will be successful until they're 60 and things don't go well or something like that there's like darkness there's like some curse as much as they love the lord i mean love the lord as much as they get blessed in their life because they sort this evil powers like some of them will seek the powers like i want my crops to do well they go to this powers for healing and things like that but the gospel became well known in our culture and we began to do away with it so when we came to america like i came here seen this darkness my dad is like anytime he sees it he's like he's shocked it's like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And sometimes as Christians, we can be tempted to be like, no, everybody's evil, everybody's dark. No, like God is alive, Jesus is alive. So you do not want to pull yourself away and think, you know what, I'm just going to pull away from this world and create my own, my own space and just push, you know, it's like, yes, as much as you have to create your own space for your children, for your family and for your sanity, the most important thing you got to know is like, let the Holy Spirit speak to, through you. Let him give you peace of mind. Let him reassure you that everything is okay. Calm down. You know, people might be losing your jobs. Everything might be all messed up, but calm down. So my story, my talk tonight is there is a plan. You know, there is a plan in the midst of the chaos. There is a plan. Um, there may be bombing in the Middle East. All, all kinds of things are going on. There is a plan. God's plans is to prosper us. Amen. It's to give us wisdom. And I've always shared this like because God has given us, because God has um, a plan for us, we have to listen. Everything, it's, I, I appreciate if you're a Christian here and you spend time with God. I say minimum, the time you should spend with God is 20 minutes a day. It can be an hour, as much as an hour, and you can go wild and spend 12 hours. Some people spend 12 hours, take a time out. Great, I'm happy for you. But as you spend time with God, He will speak to you. And I always say, like, there are times to pray and fast and read the Word. It's awesome when we as Christians get that down. I grew up in a culture where a lot of people love to do that part. It's the other part that people don't get to do well. It's the other part where God says things like, like God has told me to share with people, He wants us as Christians to have $1,500 saved in our bank. Like, regardless of what's going on in the culture where you are, have fifteen hundred dollars saved up because stuff is happening you can pick yourself up and go somewhere or buy something fifteen hundred dollars can get you a very cheap car you can still rent a place for a month or two in some places you can do something we i don't know what's going to happen in the future but the lord just said just share with people save up to fifteen hundred dollars so you should put yourself in a space like okay do i have to do doordash or whatever to save that kind of money and make sure that money is stashed up in my bank account and if you have a family if you have a family of three or four you know save a little bit more 
maybe $500 extra for each person in your family. I don't know what it is. So like that's how the Holy Spirit will lead. And I've been in situations ever since God gave that word that stuff would happen and I need to pull up a thousand dollars or pull up five hundred dollars. The brakes of the car went out. The whatever went out. Like you don't have to pull up, you know. You don't have to pull like a credit card or something. Like you have the cash, or even if you have a credit card, you can pay it up real quickly so that's one thing i would encourage us is like god is speaking he's saying something he will tell you like also i've told you guys i'm studying for a test that the lord is teaching me about a test so god will tell you something like if you're struggling with issues health issues god would say like god showed me tiktok videos online where um like i said i was struggling with high blood pressure like right now i don't mess around with smoothies like i don't mess around with smoothies i always drink smoothies every now and then i look for fruits and vegetables that help my health so it can stabilize i want to live long doing the work of god and the lord opened my heart like drink this smoothie i don't drink soda anymore like i took soda out so whatever it is there is a plan to get you out financially physically health wise it might be your relationship another thing i will share as i go on reading scriptures is this when i came from nigeria to, to the american culture i just realized i didn't have a lot of good friends like the friends would they would start up be interested in me oh you're from nigeria you're a christian they want to be my friend then i begin to say a lot of weird things they don't like it and they walk away so what's the What's the, the Holy Spirit says, you're saying a lot of weird things. You got to cut it. Like, you, you can't be saying that. You can't be saying certain things, you know. So, you, you can pray for friends, but you can have to. So, that's one thing I want to encourage you. Get a notepad. Get a book. Put it by the, your bedside when you pray or when you're going to meet with God. Like, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. And as you have prayed and you spent time with God, you might be going through your day or your problems. You might be looking at it, looking it up on YouTube and something. And the Holy Spirit will say, do this do that you know do this do that you know something like that so i just want to encourage you like me doing a live on youtube with i mean on live on tiktok or youtube with a ukulele the lord opened my eyes to it you know i saw somebody play this and somebody do this and he just touched my heart and the holy spirit said you can start that you can do that you know and the holy spirit somebody always says something it's very funny the holy spirit never says things like do this and once you start doing this Man, you're gonna blow like everything's gonna make sense. Like da da. You know, he just he gives you like a like a. It's very quiet, very smooth, like like a very easy advice. Like I am someone that when I'm in a ministry, when I'm in a church, I like to join the choir or music or do something with them on stage that has musically inclined. And ever since I got to my church, there was never a breakthrough. Ugh. Amen. Thank you, Ninja. Appreciate it. Um, I've always wanted a breakthrough in that. And the Lord said, you know, pick a ukulele and start singing. And I started singing. And um, all of a sudden, I got invited to sing in church because I kept singing and kept singing because I just obeyed God. Did God tell me, like, two years ago when I first bought my first ukulele, I never really took it seriously. Did God tell me, when you pick your ukulele and start playing, you're going to play to a lot of people. You're going to meet a lot of cool people from Indiana, from Tennessee, you know, all kinds of cool people online, in person, and you're going to be cool to sing on stage. No, he just throws it as a simple advice like, hey, do this, do that. So that's my encouragement to you. Listen to the voice of God, for there is a plan. Let's look at First Samuel 5, 15, verse 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey his voice is better than sacrifice, to hacking than the fat of ram. What am I, what is it saying here? Samuel was looking at um, Saul. Saul in the Bible was functioning in God's plan, but also doing it in his own way. So Samuel, I mean, Saul in the Bible was like, he was a king of Israel, and the Lord told him to do certain things. He told him, destroy these people, for they keep sacrificing your children to, to, to the devil. They keep doing all kinds of messed up stuff. So the Lord says, go in there and destroy those people. And Saul was like, he destroyed everything, but he kept some animals. God says, I don't want your animals. They're terrible people. They seek the devil for like prosperity and all of that. You know, they kill your children and all kinds of things. God says, I don't want your animals. Destroy everything. And Saul said, kept the animals. And 
Samuel said to Saul, it says, First Samuel 15, verse 22, it says, Said the Lord, Had the Lord great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, than to hack in the fat of rams. So my encouragement to us is, as you walk in God's plan for your life, God will give you certain instructions. He will give you certain words. He will give you certain things. You have to obey that instead of like, whatever you think in your own mind would be better. Remember, I always gave this advice. I mean, this example one, a long time ago, I said, imagine a missionary, God calls you as a missionary, and he says, take $1,500 and go to China. Tell your church members you're going to China. You're going to stay there, and all you need is $1,500. And all your friends and family are like, oh my gosh, you're going to China. You're selling everything, and you're taking just $1,500. I mean, you're going to China. They don't know about the money, but they know you're going to China. And they want to give you like, a thousand dollars somebody wants to give you another thousand dollars another 500 and it's your job to tell them hey i'm sorry but keep your money all i need is this i have enough and they're surprised like what is going on with you you're going to be a missionary somewhere else like you need money and no 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 and you have to be bold enough to tell them that i don't need your money keep your money that the lord is telling me to only take this certain amount so that's what you're going to do. You're going to obey him. So that's that's what he means when they say when scripture says to obey God is better than burnt offerings and sacrifices because your human mind can be like, let's say, put together all your friends and family. Yes. Follow him, Ninja. Thank you for the likes, Peter. Thank you for the likes, Cheryl. Um, in your own mind, you can be like, I'm going to serve God in China. I don't know anybody in China. Let me take, you know, this. Maybe all your friends and family come together and they give you twenty thousand dollars, you know, from all the people you told, and all. Of, and you're like, man, I should take it. Maybe if you go to China and you only take fifteen hundred dollars with you, maybe after paying your ticket, you only have fifteen dollars, fifteen hundred dollars in your pocket. Maybe you're humble. Maybe you're humble enough to say, hey. You do you, your choices are influenced by how much you have, and maybe you hang out with different people. You hang out in a different part of town, and you really meet with people who you really need to communicate with. Because if I go to another place, and I have fifth, I mean, and I have twenty grand, I would not be humble. I would not make wise choices, especially if you change it to the American dollars, so now the currency, and it's, it's a lot. There are a lot of countries where the American currency is a lot. And you go there and you're like almost a millionaire. You're like, you can do a lot of money. Your choices, you're not humble anymore. So you can begin to see like why God just instructs us weirdly in a very weird way. Obey God. Oh, thank you, Ninja. Appreciate it. So that's that there. Um, let's read. Joel chapter 2 verse 28 for every builder ensures that they follow the master plan you know as they developed because the plan helps everything develop properly okay we should start wrapping up now i really did give a lot of examples today um Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and it shall come to pass afterward i will pour my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old man shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions one thing i want to encourage us as christians is when you press in and you draw closer to God, especially if you have concerns in your heart about certain things and you press in to know God more, the Lord will pour out himself to you. The Holy Spirit will tell you why certain things are going on in your life. He will tell you, okay, this is why, you know, I'm always waking you up at 3 a.m. This is why you have a terrible boss. Like at a certain time when I struggled with insomnia, I used the opportunity to pray more. So I will always have like a worship song playing in the background. I was just, you know, I can't sleep. I only slept for two hours deeply and I'm up again. I just connect to the worship song playing with me and I just keep singing it, singing it, singing it. Sometimes I fall asleep and sometimes I don't. But it is what it is. But there was one time I had a horrible, horrible boss. She was the worst. Worst. When I mean worst, she was terrible. But the Lord says, I am not taking her away. She's going to be there for you. You know, she's going to be. She's, I put her in your life for a reason. And later I submitted. I obeyed. I did whatever she wanted me to do. I listened. I changed the way I was acting because the Holy Spirit spoke. And he told me, don't quit that job. Stay with this boss. And this person, the thing about this woman was she could not find people who were super loyal. There was only me and one other lady that was like loyal to her. She could not find people that were loyal for so long. People always left. Because I was loyal to her as an assistant manager, she had to submit my name to prove that she was a good manager she had to submit my name to some people so i could get a promotion i don't know if it was her because for her to even do that so it's out of the books but there were some other people looking 
from I mean from above no looking below some like supervisors who are higher than her like you know looking at me like hey he's been in the business for about two three years he should know it pretty well and she had a choice to say yes because she didn't have any other person so she helped me and I was able to get my own store um, so at the end of the day I was able to get my store because I was obedient and I stayed later she left the business but I was able to stay so what am I saying like the Lord just does interesting things where we're going through storms and trials by the end of the day is to make us to boost our faith so if you're struggling with something just have faith now you will get through it with god genesis 12 verse 1 now the lord said to abraham get thee out of thy country from thy kindred from thy father's house unto a land i will show thee so god told it is one thing to listen to god it's another thing to obey god god has said some things let us obey don't be afraid to follow god's plan abraham and his family knew nothing about god when god called him he was not afraid to take his family to follow god in the direction god has called him so if abraham did not obey god he would have not gotten the promise of being the father of many nations so abraham wouldn't have gotten the promise so there are so many things that you would not have you will not get if you don't obey god let me tell you this is the last example i'll give and we have to pray i was with my family with my um my dad had to come to i've shared this before here but my dad my parents had to come to america from nigeria for my wedding and it was three to four months till the time they haven't they hadn't gotten their visas approved i went to apply and see what i could do they said that it took it's almost a year for them to go into the embassy so we have to go to the embassy to get you know approvals and all of that like this told them like the schedule time would take a whole year for it to happen but when i went to texas and i obeyed the voice of the lord and i was coming back to wisconsin god told me to go to texas for three months i trusted him i obeyed him i didn't know i had a family member there but i was staying three months there so i couldn't stay with his family member but I was staying there. I trusted God. As I was spending my last day in Texas working there, doing Uber. I was doing Uber there. The Lord said, you have been faithful to me and I will be faithful to you. And I won't lie to you. I have seen the faithfulness of God in great ways. I have seen the faithfulness of God in great ways. Like I share like the money, the gifts, the money I get from all, from playing worship online or on the streets i use it to pay for my music lessons so that's what i used to pay for my music lessons and things like that like god's faithfulness has been there um my parents were able to get the visa and come to my wedding you know things like that we we're able to get a house i love the water it's five minutes from the lake how was i able to afford it there was a small house that was at an affordable price close to the lake there are other homes almost a million dollars next to me but i was able to get a small house you know god just does things that will blow your mind once you walk in obedience you have to walk in obedience uh, i said last thing i will share about obedience is this obedience has two levels we have to obey the first things of god love forgive be present with god you know all the simple things like the ten commandments love the lord thy god with all thy heart you know thou shalt not kill thou shalt not covet you know those simple things be faithful to your wife be faithful to your spouse all those things you know then there's a second level of obedience. Pick up your bags and go. Quit that job or stay at that job. Like I told you, I had to stay out with a horrible boss. Um, all kinds of things. But uh, we're just going to pray tonight. We're going to pray for the grace to obey tonight. Amen. We're just going to just seek the Lord tonight. And just say, Lord, we thank you. And we're just going to pray that, Lord, steal our hearts. To always put you first. Just steal our hearts. That in the midst of the chaos. That we can sit still and say. Lord what do you want me to do? What, what do you want me to do? With this situation. With my kids. With my job. With my life. With my health. With my finances. With the growth. Because I personally want to grow. Like, oh, let's, let's, let's grow this ministry to the next level. Like, Lord, what do you want me to do? And you just sit, and the Holy Spirit will tell you things. And you have to obey. But we have to have the heart to obey, and we have to seek Him. Make time. I'll tell you, for if to be a serious Christian, make time. I always say four things I encourage us to do. Pray, worship, read the Word, and meditate in Scripture. Do them for about three to five minutes. Pray. No, worship is the first thing. Every Christian should have a worship playlist. Worship, 
pray, read the word. The word of God is very powerful. But because it's so powerful, it sometimes doesn't make sense when you just crack it open. But once you worship and you pray, you invite the Holy Spirit in. The scripture says the spirit kill it. No, the letter kill it, but the spirit give it life. So it just comes alive. You know, and last night I told you meditate in scripture, pick scripture you memorize. But seriously, as a serious Christian, pick a day in the week you fast. You don't eat anything until 12 p.m. Maybe you just drink a cup of coffee, make a mocha, even a smoothie, eat a fruit, maybe till like 3 p.m. Maybe a day, a day you don't do a lot. Maybe it's a Saturdays you don't do a lot. So on Sundays you don't do a lot. Just sit and just dwell in the presence of God. Back home, we always fast 30 days of January. We always eat, we only eat dinners. But now, sometimes I need a smoothie in a day. So maybe a protein shake during the day. But just only eat dinners in January. So pick a day in the week if you're praying fast, you know. And just seek the Lord. Scripture says, seek the Lord why he might be found. Just seek him and he loves you. He cares for you. He knows he wants the best for you. And once you seek him, you enjoy great powers. You enjoy great knowledge. Ephesians chapter, I think, 3, I think it's verse 20, says, You know, to him alone who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. But he's able to do it through the power that works in us. So it depends on how much you know that's available, that's available to you. Like I know God can heal, deliver. I know God can provide. I know God, if God sends me today to go to a terrible spot, I know he will protect me because I've trusted him through that. Amen. So you need to know the God who saves. You're the God who saves. That's the only part I remember of that song. But Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you for a beautiful day, oh Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Rabaka shake it out of a oh, shake it out of a baba 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 shake it out of a baba 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 Oh Lord, we pray, oh Lord, that your power may manifest to us tonight. That we would love you. We would choose you. We would put you first, oh Lord. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Father Lord, we come before you tonight. We say, O oh Lord, help us. Help us to always know there is a plan for our lives. That we are not walking around aimlessly. We are not we are not um clueless about life. And sometimes when we're clueless we make wrong decisions, O oh Lord. Help us not to make wrong decisions, O oh Lord. Help us just be still and know that. You are God and your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh means, you see, it's said, according to Bible scholars, it says, when we breathe in and out, we pronounce Yahweh. He's the air. That means he's everything, the land, the air, the skies, everything we, we exist in, he's it. And we just need to find peace in that. And when we can find peace in that, we just know He is God, and He is true, and He is Yahweh, and we can find peace in the midst of the chaos. I break and destroy everything that causes doubt, everything causing you doubt, making you not to believe that God heals, God delivers, that God will make a way. I destroy it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that we seek you first. We put you first. We we just want to enjoy in your love, in your kindness. Oh Lord, use us for your glory. Oh Lord, help us obey. Help us obey. Help us stretch ourselves that we would obey, oh Lord. Help us obey. Come, 
down Spirit, when you move, you make our hearts pound When you feel the room I know you were here, you were moving I'm here and I know you will feel us come down Spirit, when you move, you make our hearts pound When you feel the room You're here and we know you were moving We're here and we know you will feel us Feel us, Lord with joy fill us with peace the scripture literally says you will fill us up we will see visions we will dream dreams oh lord fill us oh lord then the midst of the chaos we will know where we are going we know that we can trust you the scripture says jesus was anointed with the holy ghost and with power and went around doing great things lord fill us up with your holy spirit anoint us with your holy spirit oh lord and we will go around doing great things we will enjoy this beautiful life we will enjoy your, the beauty, O oh Lord, the power of resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray. And we just want to take this time and pray for America in the midst of the election. O oh Lord, we put this election in your hands, O oh Lord, that everything will go well. Whatever happens, there will be peace. There will be no divisions in our families. There will be no chaos in our world. It will just be peace. And we just pray, oh Lord, let your will be done. And we just pray in this next season, this next phase of our country, oh Lord God, laws that will promote Christianity will be laws that will be passed in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we just pray for our families, our friends, oh Lord, we pray for healing, deliverance. Every spirit of insomnia is destroyed. Scripture has said, He gives His beloved sweet sleep. My Lord, we will be enjoying sweet sleep in Jesus' name. Whatever is causing the problems and the chaos, not giving us sweet sleep, O oh Lord, it is destroyed in Jesus' name. You give your beloved sweet sleep in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, and we just pray that this generation is a generation of holiness and purity. O oh Lord, we pray for healing, O oh Lord. Thank you for more and more people joining, that we can be able to pack up stadiums preaching the gospel. Now, Lord, as we go to bed tonight, let your name be glorified. We remember our good friends, Alex, Andrew, Nina, oh Lord, that they will know the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you for healing. Mental illness is not a thing destroying this generation in Jesus' name. We are healed, we are whole, we are saved, we are perfected in Jesus' name. We thank you, everyone with immigration issues, it's, it's, you're, the, all the problems are solved immigration issues across the nations of the earth in jesus name thank you lord everyone in his deliverance and healing is experiencing it oh lord bad addiction stop in our friends in our family in our lives in jesus name that we are putting you first in jesus name thank you lord thank you for healing you are god and your name is yahweh your name is yahweh your name is Yahweh. But as we go to bed tonight, we pray that we have good dreams, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. There'll be no sleep paralysis. There'll be no insomnia. There'll be no attack of hell in our dreams. There'll be no evil emergencies. We will not have to wake up for chaos. And our day on Sunday, tomorrow, we're going to enjoy it. Enjoying Jesus on Sunday. Enjoying sweet fellowship, going to church, having great communion in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray we we'll see each other the 27th tomorrow, having a beautiful fellowship, having a sweet um, worship night. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys, for spending your night with me. It's a privilege. It's an honor to be able to worship with you guys every night, YouTube and TikTok. You guys are so awesome. Thank you so much for the love. And I pray you enjoy a great night. The Lord bless and keep you and make his face shine upon you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Have a good night, guys. Bye-bye. Wow, an hour, 30 minutes. Thank you, Miss Cheryl. I'm really grateful. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Aaron. The Lord bless and keep you.
Amen. Good night.